Hi, and welcome to Two Tired Teachers. Today I want to talk to you about my fishing setup for my Tuck Tech kayak. And first of all, let me tell you, this is not a how to fish video, um, but the Tuck Techs are a little bit different than normal hard-sided kayaks, and so I just want to explain a few things that I've found have worked for me. And the things that are pretty unique, uh, I think, or are different for the, the Tuck Tech. Uh, when you first look at my fishing setup, the thing that's going to be the most prominent will be these four plastic clamps that I have uh, two in front, one on each side, and two in back, one on each side. And these are basically just to tether to, uh, sort of like a cleat would be on another kayak. And so, um, my fishing basket, I actually have a slip knot, and, uh, and I have used pipe insulation around that so that it floats. Uh, works the same as a swim noodle, but it takes up a whole lot less space. And I will tell you, I have had that come, I didn't tie the knot well enough, and it came loose. Um... And it was floating, waiting for me to paddle back and get it. So that pipe insulation really does work. But I just slip the slip knot over that, and then the basket is there ready for me. Um, same thing with my anchor. My anchor is a three-pound weight that has the tiny little zip ties on both ends. And that is so if it gets wedged under something, which I have had happen... Uh, I was able to jerk really hard. It broke one of those and it flipped and I was able to retrieve my weight. And then that is spooled inside of a clothesline. Uh, I've replaced the clothesline with paracord. And, um, and that works well. I let out the anchor, let out the extra, and then just do a figure eight uh, to secure it to that clamp and it holds me in place. Uh, the other thing is I have a piece of pipe insulation with a, about 15 feet of paracord uh, wrapped around it. And that's because in my hometown, I fish in a bayou a lot. And I can, uh, I have a slip knot on the end of that. I go up to the uh, a branch or a tree stump or whatever it is that's out that I can put that slip knot over and then I can tether as, as close or as loosely as I want to make a figure eight through the clamp and I am now tethered to whatever that is or if I am at a bridge I can toss that pipe insulation over and then I can tether to the bridge embankment um, those are the things that are pretty different um, the other thing about the anchor is I may not be anchored where it's exactly straight front or back, but the nice thing about having these four points is I can change which direction uh, I am facing by where I am tethered to the anchor. And so those are the things that have worked well for me. Now, whenever I get into the cockpit, uh, basically I have my tackle box on my left, and then I use dock demons and... Guys, those are like 10, less than 15 bucks a piece, uh, and they're pretty much indestructible. Should I lose one? Not really going to be upset about it. And I'm just going to be showing you some pictures of some fish that I have caught with Doc Neemans. They will catch some fish. And so that way, uh, the largest bass that I'm going to show you here, I caught with a Doc Demon out of this kayak. And, you know, had to, I was able to use my, I do have a folding net behind me, uh, use that to, to land him. But, um, I would hate to catch a nice fish and then lose it, especially if I'm crappie fishing, lose it while it's swinging back and forth over my head and I haven't caught it. I haven't landed it. The longest pole that I use in my kayak, I started off using the collapsible poles like I do from fishing piers. And I just wasn't comfortable with those. If you are, go for it. But the largest, the longest one I use is a five foot pole, and I do use that for jigging for crappie. But the poles on my left I have set for sunfish that I'll use for catfish bait uh, or crappies. And then on the right, 
Uh, I'll usually have something that either two that are set for catfish, which I can toss out while I'm jigging for crappie, or I can have a jerk bait or something uh, for bass. And um, another thing that for me has made a big difference is that little cushion that I added. Um, you can see this was just packing that came with something that I ordered. It's that squishy foam, so it's very, very light. It's not adding weight to the kayak. But just wrap that in some duct tape, and it's doubled the height of that seat. And that has made it a lot more comfortable for me. Also, behind my seat, you see there's a little red cutting board. I have that so that if I catch bait, then I want to use cut bait. Um, I can take that out and use it for cut bait. I can also use that to measure say crappie or it's a 14 inch cutting board so whatever your legal limits for your fish are if it's 14 or less you can use one of those cutting boards uh, and kind of double what purpose it serves um, I got my kayak the first of Feb uh, December I ordered it uh, I may have gotten it at the very end of November but it was in Texas we have freezing weather we can have decent mild weather but still water temperatures were going to be pretty cool i looked into getting a dry suit or wetsuit whichever of those would be appropriate and just could not decide that i wanted to spend that much money so what i got was a sauna suit and folks these are suits designed to keep the moisture in during the summer when you're working out so that it's like a sauna well it works the opposite as well and i would get out in i went out in november in december in january when we would have a nice afternoon and put that on so that i didn't get any and i was you know some paddle splash would come in i stayed dry um so that's an inexpensive solution for keeping the water off and then and then I have just a small insulated lunch sack that I'll keep a bottle of water, uh, possibly a snack, a little uh, ice box pack in, and then if there's any bait that needs to stay cold, uh, right inside there. Then I do have a Lucky Fish Finder. That's the brand name. Not that it's lucky for me, but <laughs> that's the brand name. And I use it to see how deep I am, and basically it does let me know if there are fish in the area. Um, and I actually tether that to, or tie that on one of those clamps in front. The uh, milk crate <clears throat> I put behind my seat, and the main reason I use that is to carry all of my stuff. If it weren't for the anchor, I would just use a backpack and then roll it up and put it in a dry bag. I did that at first, but then it took so long to get everything out and set up. Using just a little tackle box in the milk crate with the fishing net, Everything fits in the milk crate. The poles are across the top. I can carry my kayak down, come back, get the milk crate, go down, and I'm done in two trips. And uh, less than 10 minutes from the time I park, I can be on the water, thereabout. And uh, it's, like I said, it's a setup that's working for me. Unfortunately, if you know anything about GoPro batteries, you know they are not that great. And when I've landed fish in the Tuck Tech, I haven't had any GoPro battery left. But Mylena was able to get some pictures of me with at least that big bass. Uh, she was out fishing with me at the same time. So, um, if you have a Tuck Tech or you just have some, some information in general that will work on a Tuck Tech, leave that for us. The other thing I do want to say is the area behind the seat, if you're not going to have a milk crate, it will handle like one of those little igloo coolers. If you want to put your fish on ice, um, that will work. And I do want to say that when the basket is tethered to or tied to one of these little uh, uh, clamps, yes, you do feel it drag. There's a, it, the As it's dragging behind you, you're going to feel that. So if that's going to bother you that you can't just paddle as fast as you can, um, then you might want to look for a different solution. But folks, this... I have a lot of fun with it I'll put it that way and this is what I do we had several people asking uh, to see the setup that I use and so um, this is it it's a lot of fun and uh, if you've got better suggestions please let us know
Okay, I know this is going to be lousy video quality, but um, we did have someone reach out on our other video and let us know that when they're out in their tuck tech, they have a cordless drill with a long paint stirrer uh, bit, like the two foot for the five gallon buckets, and they can use that if they need to leave an area in a hurry if the weather's changing or something like that, and I thought it was brilliant. And so that, along with a sump pump, uh, is something he carries in a, a collapsible bucket to bail water with. So, Phil, thanks for Good. the heads up. And um, if you've got other suggestions, please leave them so all of us can benefit. Thanks for watching Two Tired Teachers. Tight lines.